In this brief, brief video, I will review the new release of the guidelines for the examination of the fetal nervous system. In particular, this first part will focus on the screening examination and indication for that targeted neurosonography, whereas another video will focus on the second part, meaning uh, targeted neurosonography. The main innovations versus the previous editions are listed here. We have acknowledged the fact that in some areas of the world there is screening for CNS abnormalities going on also earlier than 18 weeks and we recommend uh, scanning planes. We added a formal definition of neurosonography as level 2 examination for the suspicion of brain abnormalities. Uh, set a definite list of indications to neurosonography and finally define the criteria on how to request and by whom uh, fetal CNS MRI. The main issue, uh, the first issue actually, for everybody involved in screening for CNS abnormalities during pregnancy is that they should be familiar with the uh, dramatic changes which undergo the fetal nervous system and with advancing gestational age. These changes are shown here and you see how uh, the the, the actual views of the fetal brain changed dramatically going from 12 weeks to 21 to 32 weeks of gestation with evidence of the cord plexuses with the butterfly sign at 12 weeks together with the prominent uh, sylvan aqueduct which then shrinks afterwards. Uh, in the second trimester the main landmark uh, is represented by the cavum septipellucidi and the lateral ventricle with the atrial width to be uh, measured as we will see afterwards and also uh, you see that you can also have a look uh, on the trans thalamic view at the development and the opercularization of the insula as you see here. What remains unchanged is are the two uh, recommended planes for carry out, carrying out the, the screening uh, which are actually the transventricular and transcerebellar planes. In particular uh, these two planes should be, and that are shown here uh, should be complemented with the transthalamic plane only for the sake of the biometric measurements. On the transventricular plane, there are three issues that you should uh, fulfill. The first one is that you should be able to visualize the count set velocity in between the two frontal horns along the midline. The second issue is that uh, 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 distal lateral ventricle should be clearly seen, should be clearly visible, and we do know that the uh, proximal one is shadowed by the parietal bone. And third, we should measure the atrial width according to the methodology shown in the next slide. The measurement is the same as recommended in the previous edition with the position of the two calipers in to in at the level of the glomus of the cord plexus of the lateral ventricle that you see here. And the image for carrying out these <coughs> measurements should be magnified. The second view is the transcerebellar plane. On this view, you should assess the normal shape of the cerebellum, uh, the rim of fluid in the posterior fossa, with the remnants of the, uh, of the Blake's pouch here on the midline. And also, you should measure the uh, transverse cerebellar diameter. As for the spine, when technically feasible, this is the optimal view, the ideal view to get. Longitudinal view of the spine with the two rails here and the overlying uh, continuous contour of the skin on the top of that. This should be obtained in order to screen for open and closed spinal dystrophies. Some of you may know, uh, the overwhelming majority of cases with open spina bifida would present with the cranial sign, the most relevant and, and constant of which is the, the so-called banana sign, which is due to the dis, uh, distortion of the cerebellum and the nullment of the cystina magna, consistent with the carotid malformation due to the leakage of fluid across the spinal defect. And these signs should be uh, uh, seen in the all, virtually all cases of open spinal dystrophies. And now the new sections. The first one, as I was telling you before, uh, we do recognize that uh, a screening ultrasound for CNS abnormalities can be done also earlier than 18 weeks. And if you do so, 
uh, the same two planes should be achieved for screening purposes, namely the transventricular and transcerebellar planes. And here you see one such image showing the transventricular plane and the transcerebellar plane taken at the 16 weeks of pregnancy. Another new point regards the indication to fit a neurosonography, which goes beyond the suspicion or detection of a central nervous system or spinal malformation at mid-trimester scan or the scan carried out earlier for the nuchal translucency at the end of the first trimester. There's also a family history of inheritable CNS or spinal malformation in order to reassure the parents, hopefully, that there is no such uh, another recurrence of the same lesion. And the same applies for previous pregnancy complicated by fetal CNS malformation. Then we have a fetus with congenital heart disease because it is well known that there is an increased risk of uh, congenital and acquired lesions uh, in the brain of uh, fetuses with congenital heart disease. And the same goes uh, is true for monoconeuric pairs. Also suspected or confirmed congenital viral but also uh, protozoan in intrauterine infection, such as CMU or toxoplasmosis or rubella, the few with rubella or Zika, more relevant in this day, during the last years. Exposure to teratogens known to affect neurogenesis. And finally, chromosomal microarray findings of unknown significance. And the reason why we included this last uh, item is that sometimes, in very rare occasions, neurosonome may uncover subtle but clinically relevant anomalies, escaping recognition and screening ultrasound, and thus supporting uh, the, the bows as non bows but pathogenetic. That we set the indication for fetal brain MRI. In particular, we uh, have underscored that the, the MRI should be requested by the expert performing the targeted neurosonography examination whereas it is not appropriate to request MRI based only on suspicion of brain abnormality raised in the screening ultrasound. So the level 2 uh, neurosonographic examination is the key point to decide whether it is the case or not to request a, a, a fetal brain MRI with a definite query, I would say. So in conclusion, uh, with this new release of the guidelines for CNS assessment in, during pregnancy, we have confirmed uh, the two reference planes for second trimester scan and screening as being the transventricular and the transcerebellar uh, planes together with longitudinal plane of the spine. The same two cranial planes are recommended for early screening less than 18 weeks of pregnancy in those areas and uh, countries where this is uh, done. We have set definite criteria, a table of indications for targeted neurosonography and as defined at the same time this as the, the level 2 examination for the fetal brain. Uh, the publication uh, is uh, available at our, on our website and you can copy this link and download these uh, uh, new guidelines for free. And I also remind you that part 2 uh, will be dealt with in another short video.